before we kicked off that, uh, we wanted to have some trivia questions. So hopefully you guys are are quick to the draw. If you need to uh, put in your answers, put it into the, the group chat. So here's our next question or our first trivia question. Maybe. So I don't know if you guys are seeing my slides, sorry. Okay, looks like we're getting some answers coming in. So, looks like we have answers in the group chat. Yeah, do we? Okay, trying to figure out this technology. Sorry about that. Down at the so bottom, the, you click group chat, it'll pop up for you, and you can see the answer, people putting answers in. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we got a moose. I'm gonna let Katie figure out who the first answer for the the first uh, correct winner was. And here's the second trivia question. Hopefully, you guys can see it. Are you guys seeing it, Darren? Yeah, I can see it. I just said, uh, someone said a moose once bit my sister. I'm, I'm sorry to laugh. Um, hopefully, your no, sister's probably. okay and nothing nothing happened, nothing bad happened. So, do we know if anyone's seeing anything? I see answers coming in the group chat. Okay, cool. I don't know if anyone's hearing me. Hopefully, they are. Fingers crossed. Robin told me I can do a hard thing, so hopefully this works. Okay. Looks like you're getting the chat and or the answer to it. Looks like blue whale is the correct answer. Next, we're going to go to uh, our liquidware sponsor, Jack Smith. I uh, wanted to turn the time over to you. There we go. Okay, there's my audio. Hopefully you can see my screen. I can still hear you, Kelly, so. Yeah, I can hear you, Jack. Thanks, You're good? Jack. Awesome, okay. All right, so uh, as you can see on my screen here, I got about a tight five. Let's uh, let's get underway and what we do here at Liquidware. Uh, so at Liquidware, we have we have two products. One called Stratosphere, which is a visibility monitoring, diagnostics, forensics. It pretty much tells you everything about everything that's going on in your environment. And then we have another product called Profile Unity, which is a user environmental management, rights elevation component, profile disk mounting, application layering. Uh, uh, VHD, VHDX containerizing beast of an application that does tons of different things kind of above and beyond the, the free stuff that come out of the gate. So it kind of extends on uh, what you might be doing with, with all of your Citrix implementations. Well, we're going to get a little more into this. Um, the, the big life cycle here is obviously plan, next-gen desktops, onboarding, and production. How do I get from where I am to where I'd like to go You know, in, in a nice seamless event? And that is kind of where Citrix comes into the play. Well, as, as I'm sure most of you, you're already on Citrix. So what are you talking about? Like I'm not moving P to, you know, physical to Citrix, but you may be looking at workstations in the cloud, right? Um, 
this has become kind of a hot topic for some strange reason. Everybody's starting to work at home now. So now getting your workstations in the cloud is becoming more and more important. And then, of course, which cloud is completely up to you. But it's a matter of how do I get what I did on-prem into a cloud instance. And, and Citrix makes a lot of this easy with, obviously, the Citrix and the cloud components and the black plane, uh, back plane control stuff. And how do we interact and mix with that? Well, one, having visibility in the cloud is important. You don't get to tap into your hypervisors anymore. There's no hypervisors up in the cloud. You can kind of see some of the parts and pieces that make up, you know, the the visibility in the cloud, whether that be an Azure, um, you know, insights type view or AWS if you're putting your your computer up there. Um, you have kind of that outside view of the data, but you're not in the guest operating system. You don't really know the performance of the actual user unless you have something in the guest operating system recording the performance of said user. So that's the idea behind Stratosphere is being able to show you all of the elements and pieces and parts no matter where that type of workstation might be the other half of the um, equation of how do i get from what i did traditionally on prem to the cloud is how do i get to the cloud right now being able to harvest out my data being able to move those items to that cloud being able to put it where i need it becomes important um there's a lot of neat technologies out there i'm sure jarian's going to be talking about profiles and things like that and all sorts of fun stuff but how do i get that profile to the cloud am i prepared to move several several terabytes worth of virtual disks to the cloud or am i going to start over do i want to save my settings and onboard or do i want to start over how do i get my applications up there uh, in a more application-centric versus image-centric approach. How, how do I do all of that? Uh, and that's where that's where we shine uh, as a company is we're able to kind of break your, your profiles, your workstations, your applications into smaller chunks, put them into kind of more or less a cloud-native format or whatever file-type storage you have up there, reassemble those workstations, you know, whether that be a, a full VDI desktop or a published application server, along with your settings and your virtual disks and all those parts and pieces, or even use in conjunction stuff that you might have. If you have an FSLogix container, awesome. We can backfill the settings into that FSLogix container so that you aren't losing your settings, but yet at the same time, you don't have to copy that whole thing up there. Right, because that can take forever. Or how do I then, you know, have a generic image in the cloud so I'm not updating various different things through MCS, um, through my traditional layering technology? I just want to do the apps. That's where FlexApp comes into play. I can bring those pieces together. Now, being able to pull all of these elements together, dynamically put the applications together, get you on-prem to off-prem cloud, be able to get you across various different clouds, as you can see with Citrix, they support various different clouds, is important. And that's what Liquidware does, and that's how Liquidware supports uh, Citrix customers um, moving forward into the into the future uh, of being able to see where these workstations are ultimately going to go. But where does it all start? Where you are today, and how do we manage that today to get you to where you need to be tomorrow? So, I believe that was my five minutes or less. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jack. I think that's the quickest I've ever heard you speak. So that was great. Thank you for that information. Um, without <laughs> yeah. further ado, the time over to Jerry. Uh, thank you. Hey, Jaren, you're up. Yeah, I don't think I can hear you. Sorry. While we're waiting for that, I just wanted to mention that I wish I would have had uh, Robin's advice before I started hunting for uh, video game consoles. That would have definitely uh, come in handy to learn how to alleviate some of that, that stress. So, um, Yeah, and also telling me that I could eat more carbs. That was pretty cool. I appreciate that. I don't know if my, my wife will believe me, but I think we have a recording, so I'll play that back for her.
So looks like we're getting some comments now? about don't. Oh yeah, we can hear you. Can't see you, but I don't know if we want to see you. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I was all good there for a minute with my audio, yeah. and then all of a sudden, when I tried to switch back after uh, that, I couldn't uh, couldn't go. Okay, I think I'm good now. Can you see yeah. the slides? Uh, I can see you. I am looking for the slides, but uh, I think we're good. Can you see the slides now? I just repushed it to the audience. Okay. All right. Yep. Well, thank you for, for having me today. Uh, sorry about the little mix up there with uh, the audio and, and the slides. Uh, my name is Jarian Gibson. Um, today, I'm going to talk about Citrix and Office 365. Um, I've kind of done this session kind of over several Excel events. Um, I met with the, the local Vancouver group, uh, I think, last month. Um, and after that session, they asked me to come do it here at the Excel today. Um, so I did change it up a little bit to hit some things that I get asked about a lot uh, coming from customers in the field and, and working with customers. So we're going to go deeper into a few of those key points today. Uh, my name is Jaron Gibson. Um, I'm a co-leader of the Kansas City Group, so always happy to support other uh, CUGC groups and other XLs. So congrats on having your XL event. Um, I was able to catch uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Robin. Uh, I really enjoyed her session, so that, that was some really good stuff. Um, I'm also a CTP. I've been one for several years now, um, and I am a staff solutions architect at Nutanix. Um, you can also connect with me at Twitter through at, at Jarian Gibson, and I'll talk about some other community uh, things that we use as well. Um, so kind of go through this slide. Uh, I'm going to go intro. I'm going to go Office 365 and Citrix Solutions recap um, because I feel that former session that I did uh, where I went through each of the options that Citrix had along with Microsoft. Um, I'll talk about the comparisons of those, but I won't go as into all the features um, as I've done in previous sessions. Uh, I'll talk about profile planning, profile bloat, um, multi-site considerations, and then some community resources as well in the end. Um, so let's kind of go through the uh, the intro here. Some things to think about. Um, of course, um, you know that when you're looking at you know changing your profile solution, planning for it, um, looking at the options, you have a lot of things to think about. Um, so the first thing is, I used to talk about three profile types. Um, and any more that you saw with um, with profiles, everything is moving to a container-based solution or to a hybrid-based solution. Um, if you're using the pure file-based solution, which is roaming profiles, um, you shouldn't be doing that. Stop using roaming profiles. Um, there's enough solutions out there, you know, whether included with Citrix, um, from Microsoft, uh, third-party, if you need more features, like Jack just talked about with Liquidware. So you really shouldn't be looking at roaming profiles anymore. So stay away from those, You know, shut it down. Um, but when you look at some of the out-of-the-box container-based solutions, um, that's where you have the Citrix user layer, um, and that's where you have to be full-on into app layering to use the user layer. Um, then Citrix, with version 19.12, came out with what's called Citrix user personalization layer. And what that layer is is the exact same features, the exact same functionality. Pretty much everything is the same, except instead of having to go through the full app layering process like you have to with user layer, Citrix user personalization layer is built into studio policies and into the VDA. Um, so you don't have to worry about going through the full app learning process if you don't want to do it, if you just want that feature. Use user personalization layer. Then we have Microsoft FS Logics from the acquisition they made, which pretty much, you know, as long as you have some kind of current entitlement to Microsoft, um, you're going to be able to use Microsoft FS Logics. And then we have third-party solutions um, out there as well in the market, but I'm not going to go too deep into those. Uh, then you have hybrid, uh, hybrid solutions. Um, the main one I'm going to talk about uh, is Citrix profile management, and that's going to be a combination of files and containers. And depending which version of Citrix you're on will depend on which container functionality you have. Uh, for example, they came out with in some of the CR releases that got rolled into 1912 LTSR, they had the Outlook container into a VHDX file. They also had the search index roaming into a VHDX file. And then here more recently in a current release, they have the full profile container where you can put the full profile into a, a container and not use the mix of hybrid. Um, like Jack mentioned before, they have Profile Unity, which is a hybrid solution as well, where you can do a mixture of, of files and containers. Um, and so it, it all depends. Um, I like the flexibility of hybrid because I think you have some more flexibility there um, and some things that you can do that are that you're not really you know, tied into 
where you're looking at like more third party solutions to have to cover some gaps there as well. So those are the the, the hybrid versus container. Uh, again, if you're using file, purely file solution like running profiles, this stop. So the next thing here is that uh, Shane and Shane and Oz, both fellow CTPs, will be doing a session here later about uh, about um, call center experience, optimized call center experience for users. Um, it's a funny thing that when I've we're talking about this session and I talk to other guys and get content reviewed and just have chats back and forth, Shane had this this great quote here: uh, "With great simplicity, often comes crappy manageability." And that's where I kind of talked about when you look at these container-based solutions. And I'll go deeper into that because there's considerations you have to think about when you're going into these container-based solutions. And so when you're looking at containers, and especially when you go full container, FS logics, user layers, user personalization layers, uh, even if you go with the full profile container functionality of profile management, you have to look at some cons some considerations here. So sizing is one. Uh, are we gonna size it properly, not just sizing the infrastructure, but also sizing for the user. And then maintenance. Um, some of these things you have to do offline, um, especially if you want to compact the disk, you want to shrink the disk, you want to expand the disk. Now, some of those solutions have an easy option to where you can just change the policy and on next logon, it will update the size of the container for the user. Then when you look at things like high availability, um, especially when you're doing in one data center, uh, <clears throat> making sure things are highly available, and then looking at multi-site, which we'll talk about later, across multiple data centers, and that leads into disaster recovery as well. And then look at you know single disk. Some of these solutions allow you to use multiple disks to put things in. Uh, for instance, profile management, you don't have an option but to use multiple disks. If you enable the Outlook option uh, in profile management, it gives you two disks, one for Outlook OST cache and one for the search index roaming. Then if you look at things like Pro, um, FS logics. Um, can we then go through and look, put everything into the profile container or break things out and use the functionality of the profile and the office container? And so that's what I mean when I talk about single disk uh, solutions. Other solutions like user layers, user personalization layer, you don't have an option either. It's a single disk, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, so then we go to container-based solutions, maintenance versus redirections. So some of these have, and if you hear the background noise, sorry, um, I can hear it, but uh, one of my kids is having a meltdown right now, so I apologize if you hear that. I'm actually down at the house working because we're juggling remote learning. Um, but anyways, uh, back to what I was saying, um, container-based solutions. Then you look at maintenance versus redirections, especially when it comes to FS logics, um, and you look at things like user personalization layer and user layer. The nice thing is that profile management gives you a nice exclusion and inclusion engine. Uh, the thing, though, with... Um, with profile management, yeah, welcome to 2020, thanks, Bruce. Um, the thing with profile management, though, is that the exclusion and inclusion engine only works if you're using the file-based portion of it or if you're using the profile container-based portion of it. The inclusion-exclusion engine does not work for the Outlook or search index because that's only saving the OST and then the search index, so there's no inclusion-exclusion for that. Now, when it comes to, uh, to user layers, um, you're going to have, a, and user personalization layers are the exact same, you are going to have the option to do some stuff, but there's really no inclusion exclusion engine. So that leads to FS logics. FS logics does have a redirections XML to where you can exclude and include stuff into the container, but you need to tread lightly with that. Only do certain things you have to do. Um, when you come to these container-based solutions, you don't have to go crazy and try to redirect everything out of it or leave things from not saving to it because a lot of the times when we're using like a file-based solution, we want to get those inclusions and exclusions down to a science because we want faster logon times because things copy down when they log in and they copy back when they log off. Well, when it comes to these container-based solutions, everything is mounted from a share. And so we are just going to um, mount that. There's no login, log off towards copying things down and copying things up. And that's why we come back to redirection. So um, there's a community I'll talk about later on that a bunch of us are in that we talk about this stuff to where if you go too far with your redirections XML inside of um, FS logics, you can actually break FS logics. So I'll talk about the redirection XML later, but make sure you use that for essential stuff and don't go crazy like we do with inclusions and exclusions when it comes to file-based solutions. So um, we have a question here about 
um, FS logic, which is better, all in one container or breakout outlook? That's a good question. And I'll talk about single versus um, multiple container in a little bit and why. And then user layers. Um, so user layers do have a nice size there. They are defaulted to 10 gig. They are thin provision. I'll go into that later on. Um, but they will start growing as you start adding things to them. So that's when we talk about container-based solutions, about maintenance versus redirection. So if you size them properly, you shouldn't have to be doing maintenance later on. The only maintenance you should be doing is periodic maintenance to where you're maybe shrinking and compacting and cleaning things up during maintenance windows and so forth. So I'm more of team maintenance and minimal redirections because, again, um, we've seen FS logics with lots of redirections in the XML break things and cause a user experience issue. So let's go over the recap of Office 365 uh, in Citrix. I'm not going to go deep into this one, so I'm going to kind of show you the considerations, and then we'll kind of go into the comparison. So uh, the considerations here um, when looking at this, Outlook Cache, um, Index Search Roaming, OneDrive for Business, Skype for Business, Teams, Concurrent Access, Profile Agnostic, Virtual Apps, User Installed Apps. So I apologize for the checks on here. The red check should be green, but for some reason, when I put my slide deck into the platform, it changed color of the check. So the red check should actually be green on this slide. But looking at this, app learning user layer pretty much will cover everything for you except for concurrent access and virtual apps. Because um, user layer is only for uh, desktop OS um, and there's not concurrent access to it. Then when you get into the Office 365 uh, slash Office 365 session layer, that's going to be a subset of the user layer. But the only thing that really does is it captures the Outlook cache and the index search roaming. Um, and you can be profile agnostic because you can kind of use it with other profile solutions as well. You can use it with virtual apps, but you can't do the user installed apps functionality. So it does work with server OS, especially when you're doing virtual apps. Then we look at the user personalization layer that came out in 1912. That's going to be the exact same functionality as I said earlier as the user layer. So we're not going to have to worry about any of the you know, other options except for concurrent access and virtual apps. Um, but again, it's the exact same functionality as the user layer, but without none of the app layering uh, infrastructure or process involved. Then profile management is in interesting because in 7.16, they introduced a large um, large, uh, large file handling, which you basically did a, sub uh, a direct mount to a share of files. Um, and then they introduced the Outlook container and the search index container. And then later on, they introduced the full profile container. Um, the one thing is because there's no filter driver like FS Logix uses, Liquidware, and others. Um, there's no filter driver there. So OneDrive for Business does not work. It actually gives you an error if you try to configure it, especially when you're using the profile container and trying to redirect the full profile. But as far as that, everything else works except for user installed apps. And then you look at ShareFile or what was known as ShareFile, previously known as ShareFile, now called Drive Mapper or Files. That agent, you can do OneDrive for Business uh, through the personal cloud connectors. Use it with virtual apps, it's profile agnostic, but you can also bolt that on to other solutions. So now it's kind of getting to FS Logics, right? That's the one, you know, kind of everyone's looking at because if you look at the entitlements here, uh, pretty much if you have some kind of current subscription to Microsoft, you have access to FS Logics. Um, you see here the different tiers here. And the nice thing is you get the Office uh, container functionality and the profile container functionality. The Office container is just a subset of the profile container just for certain Office functionality. You also get app masking and Java redirection as well. So how does FS Logics compare to the built-in Citrix solutions? Well, if you look at how they compare, it's pretty comparable except for user installed apps. Now, you can combine FS Logics with, with user layers or with user personalization layer to kind of get the gaps of everything. Um, but there, you know, make sure that when you do that, that you have the, the proper driver altitude set so there's no issues uh, with the builder drivers using FS Logics and app layering together. Um, and so that's where, at first, you know, out of the box, I would definitely look at Citrix options or look at FS Logics. And if you need something more or if you need additional functionality, that's where looking at third-party solutions like Liquidware or others on the market um, to be. Because, you know, everyone's got solutions for Office 365 and Citrix. It's what else do you need and, and so forth. And can you get things into like a, a package suite? So let me see um, if you've been using file-based exclusions and exclusions for so long and modifying as needed. When moving to FS Logics, are there certain items to be wary of, i.e. things that specifically mentioned? Yes. And I'll talk about that later and some tools around that to help you build that redirections XML file. So good question there. So let's go profile planning. So if you fail to plan, plan to fail. 
So when you look at profile pan planning, two of the biggest things come to mind here. Profile location. Where are you going to store it? Um, how are you going to store it? Um, do you need high availability? What's your disaster recovery plan? Um, are there built-in functionality for high availability and disaster recovery? Or do you need to look at the underlying storage infrastructure or look to a bolt-on solution? And then look at, um, and yes, 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 you can. So good question there. Can you use FS Logics with folder redirection? Yes, you can. The other problem is, is going to be profile storage, performance, and sizing. Um, and performance can vary, um, and sizing we'll talk about. So let's look at these next things here. So let's look at user layers. Um, so again, this is a full container solution mounted from a file share. The, the storage types you can use for this is SMB, so you know Windows file shares, um, anything that offers SMB, NAS appliance, and Titanix files, and so forth, you can use with uh, user layers. Um, the other thing here, too, is it also supports Azure files. So if you look in the tech zone, they have some things out there on using different um, file solutions like Azure files with profile management, with app learning user layers, and so forth. As far as performance, Citrix doesn't have, um, as far as I can find, any published numbers in the documentation or tech zone yet for performance. Um, this is one thing I'm going to do because in my job role, I test this with a certain solution. Um, and I'm going to be working on a paper with user layers, user personalization layers, FS logics, and so forth. So I will find out performance numbers from a, from a testing standpoint using login VSI, knowledge worker profile, and so forth. Um, and then sizing. If you get this size too small when you first deploy it, and by default it's 10 gig is the disk, you can resize this through the policy engine. As long as you are on the later version of user layers, you can resize this in the policy engine uh, of Studio or in the group policy engine for Citrix. Um, when they log in the next time, it will actually size that for you on the fly. So good question, Magnus. I'll talk about those other uh, options you're asking about too as well. Um, so resizing is easy. Now, if you want to do things like maintenance or if you want to you know, shrink, compact, and so forth, that's going to be an offline using you know, different tools, either disk manager, scripting, and, and so forth. And then high availability. So there's no high availability built in to this, and I'll talk about high availability options here shortly. Now, uh, here's the policy you'll see, and this is from Web Studio in, um, in the virtual apps and desktop service. By default, it's 10. You can change that, and again, on the fly, when it will um, resize their container for them. Uh, now, user personalization layers. All the exact same things I talked about for user layers, the same exact applies to user personalization layers. They are the exact same technology, again. The only difference is one's with app learning, one's built into studio policies in the VDA. So I'm not going to spend much time here on this one. And then same policy applies to you as well. And then so profile management. Um, so here's another one that we can look at here with profile management. Um, the only difference here is that you can go full container or you can do the hybrid model where it's a mix of containers and files. Um, put the larger things in the containers. Um, and then for the smaller stuff like files, that gives you more flexibility, leave those in the files. Uh, again, the containers are mounted from a file share. Um, with this one, you want to make sure we look at the exclusion engine because if you're using the file portion, it's going to copy things down at log off and sync back changes on, on I'm sorry, copy things down at log on and sync back changes at log off. Um, so you make sure that you want to go through and use those um, those inclusions and exclusions. Uh, again, SMB, Azure Files, TechZone has a good article on this. Performance, um, performance again, is going to vary, and that's one I'll be testing as well to see what all these containers do to the performance-wise. Uh, sizing, um, resize is going to be maintenance. There's no options in the UI to actually do it. Uh, there's a 50 gig um, on each container, uh, but default for the search index, for the Outlook, and for the profile container they all have a 50 gig default, but they are thin provision. The same thing with user personalization layers and um, user layers. They're all thin provisioned as well. And then high availability, it's going to depend here. So with profile management, since you're syncing things down, it can withstand a blip um, because you're syncing things down, it's running locally, and then you're syncing things back. Unless you're using like profile sh uh, streaming uh, or active mirroring, which I don't recommend because that can cause even higher performance on your file server. Um, but if you're using the containers, definitely we'll talk about the high availability options coming up. So FS Logics, um, this one container mounted from a share. Um, this one's a little more flexible. SMB, Azure Files, Azure Blob Storage. Um, this QR code I have goes out to the um, the Microsoft sites where they have the full design architecture for this storage requirements, high availability, 
permissions, exclusions. So that QR code will take you to a very good article from Microsoft on this. Now, their default starting point is going to be 10 to 15 IOPS or 10 to 50 IOPS for the starting point. But again, you want to make sure you test this and everything works as a you know, function because you might have to have, depending on what you're putting in the container, what's going on in your environment, you may have to add additional uh, may have to have additional performance requirements, but that's their published ones. Uh, so 50 for 50 for log on, 10 for steady state, um, and then sizing. Um, if you don't size these properly, you're going to have to resize these during maintenance, compact them, shrink them, et cetera. And then this one out of solutions is the only one that has high availability, high availability built in with cloud cache. Um, now cloud cache has some issues in the past when they released the 2004 preview release earlier this year. Um, it had some, it fixed some issues with cloud cache. It worked, but then I saw the latest release. There might be a new issue, which I need to go through and thoroughly test on the latest release uh, with cloud cache. The nice thing with cloud cache though, is it can do up to four SMB locations and has built in high availability. And I'll talk about more high availability considerations here shortly. So let me see the, the questions real quick. Yes. Uh, folder redirection, FS objects, they work fine. Um, agree. HA is a must for file shares. And I'll talk about that. Um, DFS is an option um, to store this, especially DFS in, and we can talk about DFS off replication. And then it says, what tool do you recommend to compact shrink FS object containers? Um, towards the end, I'll have some community resources, which has a QR code um, to link to you so you can see exactly which um, solution to use for shrinking. Um, there's a lot of good scripts out there, and I'll talk about those coming up. So profile blow, only say what you need. So let's talk about maintenance. And then Office. So the biggest um, offenders of profile bloat um, for Office is going to be Outlook Cache, OneDrive for Business, and Teams. And we'll talk about those. So um, again, remember what I talked about earlier with FS Logics, maintenance versus redirections. Don't go too heavy on the redirections. Look more for the maintenance. Make sure you size things from the beginning uh, and, and so forth. Um, so let's look at profile bloat for maintenance. Uh, again, user layer, we have that resize policy. So if we need to increase them, we can change that and it's reflected on the next logon. If we want to shrink compact them, that's going to be maintenance, right? So that's going to be offline, some kind of uh, script. And that's fun. That, that's true, Robert. Teams latest Microsoft virus. Um, does it integrate with Box as well as OneDrive? I haven't really tested Box. Everything I focused on, Magnus, has been OneDrive. From a Box perspective, I've only used uh, Box with... Um, cloud connectors with uh, Citrix files. Um, user personalization layer, again, the exact same technology as user layer, so the exact same things we talked about. Profile management has an asterisk there because it depends. So if you're using uh, profile management for the files-based stuff, that's pretty easy. That, 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 some of that stuff can be done online um, and so forth. Um, if you're using the... Um, if you're using the uh, the container features of profile management, that's when you have to look at the resize, the shrink, the compact, use scripts as well. Um, and Justin, I, I will have links to, and talk about the management tools um, as well. But yes, they need to have built-in management tools instead of community scripts to be able to manage some of these things. And I agree with that. Um, I'll talk about a, a tool as well to help you build out your redirections XML for FS Logics as well. When we get to FS Logics, um, there is some same things there. If you don't have it properly, resize, shrink, compact. Um, that's going to be some scripted operations. And again, I'll talk about some tools out there. Ryan put a good one in there from the IRC, uh, Service IRC group uh, blog post. Um, but the main thing here is that user layers, user personalization layer, and profile management are all thin provisioning. FS logics can be thin provisioning. Just make sure that you use the uh, dynamic container setting in the group policy settings to make sure that it's thin provisioned and not doing the full size of the container by default on your storage. Um, so what about exclusions um, or trying to keep things low? So app layering, user layer, and user personalization layer both have a, an option to be able to use exclusions to the registry. This is not supported. Um, and I keep uh, pushing back to Citrix to give us some kind of inclusion, exclusion engine for this to help kind of control this better. Um, like profile management. I'm like, why can't you, you guys work together, same company. Why can't you um, bring those two products together to kind of help us better manage user personalization layer and user layer? Um, but again, right now, the only option you have is this registry key for both of them. Um, and it's not fully supported. So use it at your own risk. Um, I wouldn't go hot and heavy with, with this. I would just do maintenance instead. 
Um, when it comes to profile management, uh, again, if we're have uh, we're using file based or profile containers, we have the exclusions or inclusions and exclusions options. Um, if we're using the Outlook uh, container that has the Outlook OST cache and the search index, there's no exclusion for it. But that's only storing really two things: your OST cache and your uh, search index. So we can do, you know, if we go full profile container, we can use that exclusion engine to be able to um, to make sure we keep those profile containers um, very slim. If we're using a combination of both, we can use the inclusion exclusion engine for both files and, and containers. So profile management from management point uh, is built in. Um, also, too, the director profile reset does work with these options, too, to be able to cl clean up profiles if you have to reset a profile. So FS logics we talked about uh, profile bloat. You see this nice um, big XML ex redirection XML file. Again, do not go very deep into this because you can break things. Um, things you want to exclude out are things like the some of the um, the cache folders, um, some of the things like the bloat that Teams causes, and I'll talk about that here shortly. Um, but one thing that FS logics does have to help you kind of keep the containers and check a little bit is that if they get, for some reason, they have orphaned OST files, there's a group policy setting that helps you clean that up. Um, that way you're not keeping orphaned OST files in the container. Um, but with the profile container, use redirections XML. Um, make sure that you, you know, like I talked about, the Teams cache is huge because that can, can, put, can put, cause a couple of gig of, of bloat in your profile when you first use it. And I'll have some links here and talk about what to exclude here uh, coming up. So that's where you talk about profile bloat and kind of trying to handling the size of these profiles um, across these different solutions. Again, this QR code uh, will take you to um, how to create your uh, redirections XML from a um, from a CSV file. Uh, so Aaron Parker, another fellow CTP, um, he shows you how to do that um, on his blog as well. He also has some maintenance scripts out there, and I'll have another QR code here coming up for his site. So make sure you, you take note of that. So other considerations, Outlook cache. Um, you can set the Outlook cache through policy. Um, so the, the main thing here is that for the cached uh, mode for Exchange, the default is 12 months. So make sure that you put that down to some kind of reasonable, um, some kind of reasonable uh, size there. Um, and then look at the re your, your retention policies. And this QR code here under this will take you some information on that. OneDrive. Use the uh, machine-wide installer. Look at files on demand. Look at storage sense. Um, also, review your group policy to control your sync settings. And there's a QR code there to a lot of good information on that. And then when it comes to Teams, um, again, use the machine-wide installer. Um, the inclusions, especially if you're using profile management, use that inclusions for Teams. Um, but to keep that bloat down, whether it's FS Logics, um, whether it's... Um, Profile management, that exclusions right there will save you a lot of pain uh, if you put that in for your redirections XML and also put that in your exclusions for profile management from having that two gig of bloat in your profile when you first log on. So there's a QR code information for that for there. So make sure you look at these options because they will help you kind of control your profile bloat uh, inside of your profiles. I'm going to take the chat real quick. Looks like uh, Ryan posted that. Shane posted the GitHub shrink. Yep, some good tools there that I'm talk I'll talk about as well. So good stuff there. So I'll pause here for a second, take a drink, make sure you get the QR codes. And let's move on. So multi-site considerations. So different things for multi-site, even HA, um, DFSR, especially in a multi-site scenario, um, you can use this. Make sure you look at uh, what's supported for this um, as far as the, the solutions. Um, look at a one-way replication, use backup targets. So have one site active. Um, there is file locking, there is full copy, um, but you can use the DFS in namespace with these other solutions to the right. Um, all these solutions I've been testing, so Nutanix Files, another one, which is your DR backup, that's going to be files to files. DFSR is going to be windows to windows. Um, you know, we have CA shares, so high availability. Um, windows side, you can use CA shares. Files have CA shares now. You can use files with other solutions. Um, backup to peer. Um, I did a lot of peer. Uh, early on testing, and now I've done more with backup two. And so you can do active, active, multi replication, delta changes. Um, it doesn't matter if it's Windows to Windows or if it's Windows to a NAS solution, to files, to whatever, um, as long as you can point to a file share 
You can use backup too with it. Um, Peer, they have API integration with a lot of products, so they can talk directly to NAS appliances, to APIs, and so forth. Um, the not, one thing though with FS Logics, if you're going to use backup two or peer with it, and you're using the uh, the differencing disk, the read write disk, to where it basically creates those RW BHDX files, make sure you exclude those files from backup two or peer, so you're not replicating any kind of unnecessary data. Let that sync back up to the the main profile, and then replicate that over. Uh, and again, this is any to any. And then Cloud Cache, which is built in the FS Logics. Um, need to go test the latest version because I saw some issues out there. Uh, but Active Active, it's built in up to four locations. Um, and when it comes to one container or splitting containers out, I'm of team split containers out um, because you want to make sure that you keep the settings and replicate what you need to replicate. So things like the profile settings, you definitely want. Um, your Office 365 stuff is mainly cache. So that's something you may um, want to think about of not replicating and only doing the profile container. Um, so that's where you know you look at single container versus multi-container and so forth. And again, Cloud Cache is kind of any to any as long as you can get to what they support for SMB shares or Azure files or Azure blob storage. Um, other things continue. You know, a lot of people want to do active active, but in the reality, it's more active active pinned or active passive, um, especially with these tools. Um, but we're getting closer to kind of that active active scenario. Um, Cloud Cache does help, um, but you know you're still looking at probably active, active, or, act, or I'm sorry, active, passive, or active, active pinned. We talked about the replication methods available. I'm sure there's other ones out there. The last slide is what I've been testing. What I what I kind of focus on. Um, again, the only one that has something built in is Cloud Cache for FS Logics. Everything else, you're looking at some kind of third party solution. Hopefully, Citrix does something to build something in on their side. Um, we talked about you know multi container versus single container. So again, you want to make sure that you're only replicating what you need. Um, even with uh, profile management, for example, if you're using the large profile container support and you're only putting certain things in there, like large files, maybe those are cache files too. Don't replicate those. Don't replicate the office container, just the profile specific stuff. Um, again, we talked about solutions. We'll go into OU design here in a little bit. But remember, this is going to impact user experience. So you really got to think about and plan this out uh, as you go ahead. So when we talk about uh, OU design, um, make sure that we have a proper AD sites and services laid out. Um, your subnets, your site names, your site controllers, all that kind of set up, global catalogs across the board. The main thing here is that you don't want file server A and site, um, file server A and site A talking to domain controller B and site B and causing an impact to your logon and causing a user experience issue. And so that's why we want to make sure that we have proper sites and services built out proper subnets, proper controllers, global catalogs. So we're always going to the nearest one for the fastest logon. And the same thing with OU design. Um, so if we're in like a multi-site uh, setup, making sure that we have policies set up to local resources, set up our, our catalogs based on those different OUs, our configuration sets, our persona paths. Um, if you do stay to a single OU set, make sure you use group policy preferences to, to set those based on where they log into. But if you're non-persistent, you should have those built out in proper OUs, proper policies, point to the local resources and, and so forth. And so that's the, what we want to do with the OU structure there. Um, considerations here for app layering, um, elastic layers are read-only. If you use those, those are copied at any time. User layers are read-write, so you can't just copy those. Um, if you don't use a storage-level solution like Peer or, or Backup2 or something lower level, um, you can script it, but just know that you only copy that when they're not in use. Um, to change the path, there's a the registry key there to look for the different uh, folder path. Um, but also, too, in later versions of app layering, um, it does now honor the studio policies for that path for user layers. Um, user use personalization layer is the exact same, pretty much, again, container-based, read-write, same thing, policy-based for the, for, the, for the path, and then look at uh, using some kind of storage-level um, application like peer or backup two or lower, um, or you can script it again when they're offline, not in use. Uh, good question, Robert. I don't see a lot of usage in app layering, um, but um, I know there's some out there. Um, but honestly, you know, if you're looking for the user layer functionality and you're not using the rest of app layering, you should be going to looking at full user personalization layers because that's all built in, integrated. And if you want that same functionality, you don't need app layering to do that. Um, profile management considerations. Files are easy because you can just copy those from the file store 
Um, but containers, again, read write. So I think I'm, I have like two minutes left here. So again, read write, um, and then make sure that we're just copying those um, through some kind of storage level tool or scripting when they're not in use. FS logics, cloud cache. Look at your different locations for VHD locations if you're not using cloud cache or your cloud cache locations for up to four locations. Again, read, write, and so forth. Um, in closing, additional things. I talked about community tools, community resources. Uh, Aaron Parker, uh, follow him at Stealth Puppy. He has a good stuff on creating the redirections XML. Um, also look at his for considerations when sizing and capacity plane, a good blog on that. And he also has scripts for shrinking as well. Um, David Wilkinson, James Rankin, and James Kingdom all have good stuff on using solutions, not only the Citrix built-in stuff, but also third-party solutions like Liquidware. Um, James Rankin has some good blogs, too, on profile bloat, using Teams with Citrix, um, FS Logics, and so forth. Um, we even had a good chat, some of these guys in the community, about the redirections and, and the bloat. And then Jim Moyle to his GitHub. Um, he has a good blog or a good tool out there for scripting or for, sorry, scripting to compact and shrink and do maintenance on your FS Logics containers. So you make sure you use the QR code for that. Um, and then um, I'll pause here for a second to make sure you can get a screenshot of those. Uh, I'm sure the deck will be shared too. Uh, and then last thing I talked about community resources. So a bunch of us, myself, I know Shane's out there, the guys in the previous slide, the world of EUC, we're on Slack. We're also on Discord. Um, so all the Slack channels and Discord channels are mirrored to each other, so pick your preference. Um, we also have a channel in there for Search IRC as well. So, you know, we always have a good chat in there. Uh, FS Logics is probably one of our most busy channels in that instance. Um, a lot of good community resources, all these discussions I talked about, even more um, are in there. So, so come join us and get involved. CUGC posts in there. You know, we, we, we publicize the CUGC events there as well. So come join the community. It, it's all about EUC. Um, with that, I think I'm right at the end here. Um, so let me go back about questions. Um, I answered the app layering one. 365 on the image is it un uninstall and reinstall each time. Um, it depends on what you're updating. Um, but typically with that, you can just do the updates to it th through Windows updates and not have to go through and do... Um, a reinstall. Um, and right here it says Cloud Cache. I'd advise against Cloud Cache on premise storage. Once we scale past 100 users, it's caused major performance issues. So, yeah, so and that, that's what comes into when the Cloud Cache thing about scaling is making sure you're, you're planning your storage properly, knowing what each user is going to use for storage requirements, and then building your storage out based on that. Um, so, that, that kind of depends. Just make sure that you plan for that properly because Cloud Cache is going to put that storage in multiple locations. It's also going to have cache in the local uh, image. So if it wants 10 desktop using cloud cache, it's going to cache locally and then replicate out from there. So making sure that you're covering from the performance across the board. Um, we done some testing to up a thousand users um, in our lab, um, and we'll publish that out with our with our using FS Audits Nutanix files to where we're getting good performance on Nutanix files with it, um, and we're doing a thousand users uh, with cloud cache and going through that log of VSI testing with it. So. That's where you know making sure that you're planning things out properly comes into play. Um, any other questions? If not, I think I'm right on time. Thank you, Jarian. Uh, from everyone out here in the Northwest, we appreciate your your time and your expertise. And I wanted to let you know that when my kids have breakdowns, my office becomes the the timeout room. So <laughs> we totally understand on that. But no, I. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to pass the time over to IGEL, and thank you, for everyone, for watching this webcast. Appreciate it. IGEL is next generation Edge OS for cloud workspaces. It's simple, it's smart, and it's very secure. So, what is IGEL OS? IGEL OS is a platform independent software solution. Runs on any compatible 64 bit device. From there, it helps organizations protect hardware investments. Maybe an organization is looking to postpone or bypass a costly and what could be a disruptive hardware refresh cycle. IGEL can help. 
support for multiple monitors, as well as an integration with a broad range of peripheral devices. That could be printers, scanners, smart cards, the list goes on and on. You name the device, bring it to IHL, and we'll support it. Many installations, as a lot of people might not be aware of, run on HP, Dell, Lenovo's, laptops, thin clients, desktops, and the list goes on and on. IHL manages the IHL OS implementation for an organization through the use of the Universal Management Suite, or commonly referred to as UMS. It's a single unified management uh, control plane that really uh, helps for distributing and managing endpoints running IGEL OS. So with that, let's dive into the management console and let's take a look at what, what we're talking about. So what we have here is we have the IHL Universal Management Suite. And right away we take a look at the left hand side of the management console. And we immediately go to not only the profiles, but the first place is devices. That's where we start. We bring devices into the management console. We inventory them. We can choose one of many different options available to manage the device. Maybe we want to look at the information of the device, the endpoint device. But now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shadow a device. The one device I have in my San Francisco location is a local in the office device. The other device is a remote device at an end user's home office. So if I shadow my San Francisco location, what you'll see is I have nothing on the desktop except for the Citrix Workspace app. If I go here, you can see there's no applications and there's no ability for the end user to configure settings on this device. Now if I go to my remote desktop and I do the same thing, I shadow, you'll notice I have the same user experience, right? So two different devices on separate sides of the country, North America, and I have the same user experience and I have Citrix Workspace Suite. So once I have that installed, the end user can launch Citrix, they can log in and they can do, they can use their applications. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like as far as pushing out a client to the endpoint devices. So if I go back into my management console, and let's say maybe I want to push out Google Chrome, the embedded Google Chrome browser within the IHL device. Real easy. I go in, I create a session profile for Chrome, right? I have it configured with all the settings that I need for my end users. Notice that all of the settings that are configured will be highlighted. So I have this ready to go. Click Save. And now I'm going to assign it. I assign it to all of my devices. I come over. And I say no. And as soon as I come back to my devices, you'll notice not only is my end user logged in to Citrix, but now they have a new local Chromium browser available to them on the endpoint device. If I want to, I can come back and I can go to that Chromium browser and I can remove the assignment. Once I do that, you'll notice the Chromium browser goes away. So it's a zero touch administrative experience without impact to the end user experience. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.
Thank you, I Jill. Uh, appreciate the content that you shared with us. I uh, just wanted to usher people to our next uh, presentation. It's going to be Matt, and the topic is going to be um, how to do uh, multi-factor authentication with your Citrix gateway with in factor so it's going to be awesome thank you very much again uh, jarian appreciate your time and uh, putting together the presentation for us uh, so without further ado uh, enjoy matt's presentation thank you <laughs> 